Hello, I'm Aaron Lakota. I'm here at Jerry's Music Shop, again in South Hadley, Massachusetts. Uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about tonguing and articulation. Um, this is a, in my, in, for me, this is an important topic um, because, again, we don't want to think that our articulations are necessarily um, a change in the air. Okay, so let, let me give you an idea of basic articulation for the oboe. Um, if you say the word, if you say da, okay, so a lot of times, um, People will say ta, say ta, um, ta, 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 ta. I actually like da because it's a little bit more round and um, you can get, if you, if you feel where your tongue is in your mouth when you say da versus ta, ta has sort of a, um, a backward motion to it, whereas da is very forward and it hits the reed in just the right spot. Okay? You won't likely hear a difference in, in the sound necessarily, um, but I find that when people think da, they have a little bit quicker of an articulation. Okay? So, um, if you look, if you remember from an earlier video where we were talking about the basics of um, making your first sound, um, we didn't really get much into articulation and tonguing, but um, here we will. So you might remember in that that I was talking about making sure that the your air is ready to go for the read, so your support is happening. Um, you want to do that again when you're articulating. Um, so what I like to think about is that this is all set up. Um, if you think of coughing again. <coughs> Feel these muscles tense. Have that ready to go when you get to, when you're ready to articulate, and then just release that pressure with a duh. So if you go duh, okay. So you feel that there's sort of a pressure built up behind your tongue, behind the reed, and then duh, okay. So now if you're articulating, um, I don't suggest actually aiming for the reed. If you say duh, you'll feel that you will hit the reed, but it's actually not the goal to hit the reed. So. So I'm just saying da 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 da, and I'm not changing my air at all. I'm just trying to keep that as steady as possible. So if you think the air keeps going, I don't know if you can hear the sound I'm making, but I'm blowing that air constantly, and I'm just letting that be separated by the by the tongue. Okay. Da 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 da. So the air, think the air is keeping constant. Okay. Oftentimes, what you'll hear is students backing off their air between the tongues. So you get, uh, 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 uh. we don't want that. Something like this. We don't want that. We want the air to be going constantly through the reed. Okay, and just separate it with the da, da. It's, it's almost, we want to think that we're playing a long tone, okay? We're just playing one constant pitch and then separating it with our tongue. So if we think long tone. And then articulate. And especially for beginners, what you want to listen for is that the pitch isn't changing. So we're not getting... We're not getting sliding up or down to the pitch between. We're just getting one constant pitch, and it doesn't change when you articulate. So it's not. We're just keeping that air as steady as possible. So this is for, think of this more for, be, for beginners. As you get more advanced, you might change your air to get different sort of articulations. But I think for beginners, this is important. So again, think that you have your support set, your air is being stopped by your tongue, thinking da, and then you release the da to articulate the note. Da, da, da. And you can keep a lot of space between the notes. Say you have a, um, an articulation, a, a note that you need to end. If you say da, and then end the note with da, by, by replacing the da on the mouth, da, it can end the note that way. Now, me personally, I like a nice little taper at the end of each note, so I don't generally end my notes that way. But in case you're looking for that sort of sound. I like a nice little taper at the end of notes. Now, one important thing that I'd like to talk about with, with articulation and phrasing is making sure that your articulation doesn't disrupt the phrase. Okay, so something I like to do, this is a phrasing exercise in general, and I'll show you how we can make that into a... Um, an articulation phrase is I like to think of 
the phrase going to the top of the scale. So if we take a G major scale and we move to the top and then come away at the bottom. So essentially, I'm using my air to push towards the top and then I'm coming away at the bottom. Hopefully you'll hear that. So do that on all your scales. Now, if we want to incorporate articulation into that, it's important that we keep that phrase going through all the articulations without disrupting it. Oftentimes, you'll get sort of what I call plateaus in the articulation. So we'll have da, 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 and they never, it never seems to go anywhere. So this is what we do want. using my air to go forward and I'm lightly saying da between, between each of the notes to make it nice and articulated but still maintaining that phrase.